So uh, today is our, our Vision Sunday, mostly because we obviously need to present the budget to you for 2023, um, where we are going to commit our finances. And uh, so that is the kind of business end uh, of today. But it's also an opportunity for us uh, as, as a church to, to kind of um, keep track of where we are with the Lord. To look back on, on the year that has passed and obviously then to, to look forward into the year that still uh, lies ahead of us. I'm really excited to do that. I think it's a, it's a good principle or habit, by the way, at the end of a year, because we in the Southern Hemisphere live a calendar year, we start the year in January, obviously we end it in, in December. I think it's a good, it's a good habit to, to do some reflection at this time of the year, especially if you get some, some leave and some, some time, some downtime uh, over this holiday period, for you just to take, take stock Look back over the year that has passed, lessons that have been learned, and areas perhaps that you've grown, and, uh, and uh, yeah, things that you, you might want to change, uh, that you want to leave behind going into, going into next year and going into the future. And then, uh, again, to, to take stock of those, those adjustments that you want to make uh, in your life. And this actually became very much part of Israel's history, not so much at the end of any calendar year, but certainly throughout Israel's journey always find that the prophets and the leaders of Israel, the, the songwriters, often referring back to what God had done in the past as a catapult, as a, as a catalyst to, to faith for the future. And so we're going we're gonna to look uh, at, at a very familiar uh, stage in Israel's history, Joshua, Joshua chapter 5. I want to read some, some verses and uh, then just make some comments that we can certainly apply personally, but also particularly as, as a church. So Joshua chapter 2, oh, 5, sorry, Joshua chapter 5, let's read from verse 2. Um, they've crossed the Jordan River, and they are now about to enter into the promised land, and they're going to face some giants, and they're going to face some, some tribes there that they, that they probably didn't expect to. Uh, the, the spy report had obviously come back, and they, they sort of knew what to expect. But it, in chapter, chapter 5, verse 2, it says this, At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives and circumcise the Israelites again. And so Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the, Israel, uh, the Israelites at Gabeath Haraloth. Now, this is why he did so. All those who came out of Egypt, all the men of military age, died in the desert on the way after leaving Egypt. All the people that came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the desert during their journey from Egypt had not. And the Israelites moved about in the desert 40 years until all the men who were of military age when they left Egypt had died since they had not obeyed the Lord. For the Lord had sworn to them that they would not see the land that he had solemnly promised their fathers to give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. And so he raised up their sons in their place, and they were the ones Joshua circumcised. And they were still uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. And after the whole nation had been circumcised, they remained where they were in camp until they were healed. And then the Lord said to Joshua, today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. And so the place has been called Gilgal to this day. And on the evening of the 14th day of the month, while camped at Gilgal, on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain, and the manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate from the produce of Canaan. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible? And, uh, and, so, and so the Israelites, yeah, they are. And I think they're, they're, they're one or two like, important pointers that we could apply personally and uh, certainly for us today as, as a church. There's a looking back with gratitude and there's a looking forward with faith. It's a time of the year where as individuals and as a church, we can look back with gratitude and all the things that the Lord has done and we can look forward with faith into the future into the future. So we're just going to have a look at those, at those two things today, and I want to highlight for us some of the, the, uh, the things in the church, some of the things that we are celebrating today, some of the things that we are, we are trusting the Lord for. And so firstly, we want to look, obviously, look back with gratitude, to look back with gratitude. And, and the Israelites had to do two interesting things. Uh, firstly, Joshua is then commanded to circumcise all the men, and I think in reading that, you understand that just the circumcision was a sign of the covenant. It was a sign that they were the covenant people. So now a whole generation had died in the wilderness and a whole new generation had been, had been essentially raised up. 
They might have been wondering, well, you know, it's all very well, you know, um, you know, these promises that God promised to our forefathers and to Abraham originally and so on. But here we are. Their whole lives, all they had known was a wilderness wandering because of the disobedience of their parents. All they are, their whole lives. And the other are ill prepared to go and take on the Canaanites and all the other arts that lived in the, in the promised land. How many of them were wondering? You know, this God, he's promised all these things, but is, is he really going to come through in his word? And does he really do what he says he's promised? Same kind of questions you and I have from time to time. And isn't it interesting that after Joshua has circumcised all the men now who are of military age, they are born and they grew up in the desert, he says, now the reproach has been rolled away. The shame of slavery and the wandering in the desert. That wasn't their fault, but their parents' fault and their parents' unbelief. All of that has been dealt with. Guys, when you come to the end of this year, the stuff that you might have engaged in and done, and, and uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, remember, we were still wearing masks. Omicron was all around. Just a short 11 months ago. And maybe, maybe when you look back through the pandemic, the, you could have done more. You, you maybe, you know, maybe fear overwhelm, whatever. Understand this, that Jesus has died for it all. It's all settled. The reproach has been rolled away once and for all through the cross. Once and for all. And so stuff that happened this year, stuff that maybe you're not proud of, stuff that if you had to do it over, you would do it very differently, leave it in the past. Leave it at the foot of the cross. It's done. It's done. The reproach, the shame has been rolled away. And then secondly, they, they celebrate the Passover. They celebrate the Passover. What was the significance of the Passover? Well, this was the first time that they had celebrated the Passover since the original Passover 40 years before that their parents had celebrated. What was the significance of the Passover? That was their deliverance from slavery. For 400 years, they went, in as a, they went to Egypt as a family that grew to a nation. For 400 years, that nation had been slaves until the Exodus, until that Passover meal that represented their deliverance from Egypt. No longer slaves, but now the children of God, being led to their own land. Being led to their own land. So what were the Israelites doing? What were they doing now at Gilgal? Before they entered the, the promised land, before they moved into this uncertain future, they paused to thank God. But the, the very nature of celebrating the Passover reminded them of God's mighty deliverance in the past. That even though they had to wander for 40 years, even though their parents had... had experienced the Passover, experienced that my deliverance had fallen into unbelief and wandered for 40 years. Even so, God was still faithful and they had good reason to look back with gratitude and celebration, as do you and I. No matter what this year has been, no matter what your health has been, no matter what uh, your financial constraints have been, you and I have good reason to look back with gratitude for a God that has been with us through thick and thin. A God who has helped us when we have stumbled. A God who has not let our foot slip. A God who has watched over us. Leslie had a word this morning. She didn't know that I was going to refer to this thing of manna. Just, uh, and, and the picture that she had was like manna. This manna that God provided for, for the Israelites. It was like this covering. This covering. His daily provision for them. His presence, firstly. And then his provision that came every single day. For 40 years, they lacked nothing. Because their God was with them. That God was with them. I encourage you to look back on this year. That's why it's good to journal, because we forget. To look back and see how good the Lord has been. How good the Lord has been, even in those tough times, even through the valleys. How good the Lord has been. Gratitude. Gratitude is a missing virtue in our society. It's a missing virtue in the kingdom too. Just being grateful. You know why? Because gratitude, when we are grateful, keeps us grounded in God's provision and God's goodness to us. When we start to act like entitled brats and we forget all that the Lord has done, maybe that's why it was so much part of Israel's history and, and uh, the prophets and the leaders always brought them back, to be grateful for what God had done for them, to be grateful for what God had done. As a church, as a church, it's been so exciting. Andrew, maybe you could get the video ready. Um, the media team had just put a video together for us and... Um, and coming out of the pandemic, being able to do things that we hadn't been able to do for a while, good for us just to, just to look visually at some of the things that, um, that, uh, that we've been able to do this year. And, um, and rather than 
try to look for yourself in the video. Uh, just, just sit back and just say thank you, Lord, for all that we've been able to do again, coming out of the pandemic and just being able to celebrate kingdom life together. Thanks, Andrew. Oh, we have had some fun, eh? Um, so, what, what a year, hey? Hasn't it been great to be back? You see those pictures of masks, and you think, oh, God, thank you so much. Um, but uh, it's just been great being able to do things that uh, we may not have been able to do for the pandemic, like Into the Sun, just such a flagship youth event, um, just to see God meet young people, lives were saved, touched, healed, restored, uh, just, just amazing to be able to do things like activate and, um, and all in and so on more fully. Um, obviously, we're limited by numbers, able to have a full carol service, uh, not to, you have to book, you have to book, just come, just come because we can. And so we just look back with gratitude, how good God has been. It was a number of firsts as well um, for, for us uh, this, this last year. It's the first time, the first time that we've sent teams to three different parts of the world in one year. To Lebanon, to Lesotho, I know Lesotho is uh, close, but it's still crossing the border, and there's a team going to India at the end of the month. Isn't that incredible? In one year. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, Christmas, uh, the Easter concert, the Easter concert, was very, it was very different. Uh, just, uh, it was a fundraiser for the Abomi Center, but how incredible is that? You saw, uh, saw some, some images uh, there. Um, what else um, were some of the other firsts? We did a, a dinner for the nurses saw some of the pictures up there. Um, we hadn't done anything on that scale before to be able to serve nurses and our nurse managers, actually, in our public hospitals, not the private hospitals, where they actually felt it the most. We had representatives there from Livingston Hospital, which through the pandemic and the peaks was, was the, the epicenter of the COVID response, um, health response and so on. And, uh, and their whole staff, one of their, um, their, their senior sisters addressed, spoke just spoke so well at the dinner. And we were able to love and just serve them with the, the love of Christ, just expressing gratitude to what they had done uh, for, uh, for our city. Um, another first is uh, this year we, uh, we started, and Gary's mentioned it, we started supporting Pastor Pawan, who the team are going to meet in India. And part of the reason for supporting him is because he is in one of the most persecuted areas of India. And so um, just as an as a investment into the, the persecuted church, for the persecuted church. And so really excited for that. Those were, were milestones, things we hadn't done before, and things that we wanted to step into and continue to, to run with. Most of all, probably, is just the experience of his presence, just the delights in his presence. It's what we live for. Um, but I always look back uh, over a year just with gratitude for how, many, how, how the Lord comes I don't know for you if you remember back to our week of fast and prayer in, uh, in February this year. We had four nights um, that were the fullest we've ever had. And, and we just said it as a time for renewal and refreshing. And how the Lord just came to meet and to touch us and, and refresh us after the two years that we've been through um, with the pandemic. And, and how, how he has come so faithfully through our services. Um, the prayer times that we've had, just a simple moving to the hall. Uh, has just made such a difference. I'm just feeling like we're praying in one accord, just, just together has just been so meaningful. The thing I never take for granted, the thing I'm so grateful for every year is just how the Lord is so faithful. How He's faithful with His presence. He comes and He ministers to us. And we know that, we felt that. How many times people have been prayed for at the front, um, ministered right where you are in your seat because He's faithful. His presence, His presence manifested to us. And so, uh, Light us, let's look back on this year with deep gratitude and thankfulness. Um, obviously, you reflect in your own part, maybe the ministry that you've been involved in, uh, and uh, just look back with, with gratitude and, and so on. But just on a whole, I think it's always good for us to look back with, with gratitude. At the same time, then, we look forward with faith. We look forward with faith. We look forward with faith. And so, and so uh, the part of the, the uh, Joshua circumcised in the males was to reestablish the covenant in case there were any doubt, in case they weren't sure, to reestablish the covenant that God would fulfill with his people. Why? Because he had a future for them. Yes, there were giants in the land. Yes, uh, you know, there were, there were other tribes that were occupying the land. But God's promises were still true. And even in times of uncertainty and, and so on, we are still and we will always be people of faith. Always be people of faith. Heck, we don't even know who our president will be next week. No jokes. You followed the news? We don't even know. 
but we know our God. We know our God. And you know, I just social media have been flooded with prayer initiatives all, all over the place. The reason why I have hope in this country is not because of ANC policy. The reason I have hope in this country is because we know how to pray. This country, Christians know how to be mobilized in a time of crisis and need and really pray. Where do you think all that prayer goes? Do you think it's left, you know, in a box in heaven? We have a prayer answering God. You know what I found for myself? The more I pray for the country, the less I stress. I just noticed that. The more I pray, I noticed it through COVID, the more I pray, the less I stress. The more I pray, the less I stress. Do you know why? Because prayer actually makes a difference, not just in the God who's going to answer, but in your own heart and your own faith journey. So that's just a side item. So we are people of faith who believe in a future because God is in it. Because God is in it. So what does it mean for us as a church? So let me just say this. Uh, we, well, many years ago, my, this really changed my life. You know, back in the late 90s when, when I graduated from college, started out in ministry, you know, all these, all these uh, leaders uh, writing books like Andy Stanley, you know, how to grow a church from naught to like 2,000 people overnight. And, and uh, he didn't really write a book like that, but, you know, it felt like it. Um, you know, and then uh, uh, Rick Warren, the Purpose Driven Church, the Purpose Driven Life, and all these things, all this goal setting stuff. And, and it can be very intimidating. Until I came across a, a book by an author I can't even remember, but he, he, he made this observation actually from Scripture. And he said, so when you look at Scripture, is it like goal setting? It wasn't like the Israelites, you know, God gave them these big, you know, what do, what do you call them? Big, hairy, audacious goals to go and do this and this and this. Actually, God moves, He expects His people to follow. And just run with it. Basically, in summary. And he, and he compared the analogy, used the analogy of like surfing a wave, riding a wave. You know, surfers don't make the momentum on a wave. You know, nature does. As, as uh, the, the water comes closer to the shore, it builds up and, and so on. And uh, you remember from, from geography or whatever. And it builds up and eventually it crashes and so on. Surfers just utilize what is already in front of them. I like that. It's an analogy I can relate to. I, you know, I surfed. Back in my varsity days, I really surfed. I had hair, long like Ross's. Um, <laughs> and I had a Lumo blue and pink wetsuit, which, which would have been helpful in the days before GPS. Had I drifted out to sea, you know, any rescue helicopter would have seen me from like 50 miles away. It was Lumo pink and Lumo like bright blue. Anyway, and... Um, and uh, so I can appreciate that. And, and a, a surfer will know this. You'll wait and you'll wait, look at the horizon, and you'll wait for that, that swell just to rise. And then you'll try to position yourself to see where you think that wave is most likely to break. Because otherwise it's going to break and white water all over you. So you want to see how you can catch and ride that wave. And I think the move of God is a lot like riding a wave. It really is. You want to see what God is doing, position yourself to ride that wave as long as God intends. As long as that wave isn't that easy? It's not like we have to come up with stuff, so we just have to look and see what is God doing. Let me, let me just identify a few, and then we will, um, and then we will sort of bring it, bring it to a close. One of the things that, uh, and in no particular order, one of the things that started to happen just before COVID in our children's ministry was that um, Kim started to connect with two other children's pastors. Now, now, most children's ministry in the city is probably done by part-time or people that, that, that just volunteer. Um, very few churches can afford a full-time children's worker or children's pastor. She's con- uh, um, connected with two. Out of that came a connection with SU. Just before COVID hit in, in March of 2020, um, they did a, a, a children's church conference. Um, some of you might remember. This church was packed. We put out all 265 chairs, and they were all taken. Of children's workers that just came. And so through that time, Kim has, has just kind of um, uh, stayed in touch with them. They did uh, something at Vineyard earlier, earlier this year, and that has just exploded. Next year, Kim is, is equipping herself um, in terms of children's ministry, uh, particularly her Q and uh, Faith and Margot will be going down to do a two-week intensive thing on w- working with wounded children, um, mostly just to ride that wave to be able to serve our city and children's pastors and workers better in our city. In our city, and that's what she's going to, that's what she's going to be doing along with the team. Connection, now known as, as Club Lit, has carried on for like 10 to 20 kids for the better part of a decade. And I don't know what happened to COVID, but all of a sudden kids started coming. They now average 40 to 50 on a Friday night, junior youth, primary school age. 
Many of them coming from church family, uh, uh, families not connected with our church. Some of them have started coming to our church. So what do we see? We see there's a wave in children's ministry, not only in our own church, not in our own church, but beyond in our city. Because that's part of our vision, to impact our city and beyond with the kingdom of God. With the kingdom of God. And so, and so children's ministry is a great way to cut your teeth, by the way. It's an area where God is moving. You want to be part of that? Sign up. Kim would love you to sign up. She would love you to sign up. Kids are very forgiving. They're very forgiving. You can stuff it up and they'll still smile at you and love you and, and, and so on. But what a great opportunity to not only see our own ministry growing here, but be able to serve our city. Um, similarly, uh, in, uh, in, in our pastoral space, you've heard me talk from time to time uh, around uh, the pastors that we network within our city. One of the things that, that, we come, that we all understand now is how devastating COVID, the pandemic, was to our township churches. Um, many of them would have lost breadwinners. Pastors, you know, eventually became like people would rock up um, needing food, uh, needing just any kind of help and assistance from, from pastors. We were able to, to clear a lot of our funds in, in apostolic to, to, help, um, to help those pastors and help their churches. And, um, and we did so gladly. But, but that many of those churches have not recovered. And two, two of our, our uh, leaders in our, our Baptist network um, we were part of the immersed thing uh, loosely, came to see me about a month ago to, to say, Trevor, whatever you do, this is what they said to me, Trevor, whatever you do next year, if you have a conference, if you have a men's thing, whatever, won't you invite us? Because our churches are falling apart and we need, we need support and we need, um, we, you know, I forget the exact words, but just need that input and, and just need the leadership. And that has come because we've hosted the fraternals and, and uh, we try to do that really, really well to honor and bless them. And out of that has come a credibility that, um, that we can sow back impact in our city and beyond. And so we have opportunity. We've set up a, um, a pastor's conference where we can take some of the pastors and the wives, who many of them will never go on holiday. They can't afford it. We want to sponsor them to go to the Willows for a few days, have a mini conference there. And, um, and so I tell you these things, not only for us to, to be able to look and pray into, but because many of you might want to be involved. Many of you might want to be involved. Uh, so many of us, it doesn't take much other than just to be willing to go and be involved and do something. And clearly, God has just opened something for us. And obviously, through the immersed thing, you know this, there, there's been this momentum. And we feel next year could be a year where it really just kind of the wave almost peaks um, in terms of our engagement. We've got missions. So, so Lesotho, um, India, and now Lebanon will be ongoing um, investments. And so uh, Mark Bernard will be coming back. The team that went to Lebanon uh, would like to continue that partnership and that investment. And so, and so we, we see that as, as a regular thing. And thank, um, thank the Lord for Gary and what he has brought and, and opened up within our mission space um, and our apostolic space. We might even be going to Zimbabwe to see Gerald. Um, and so, and so we, just, we just see these, these waves that the Lord is opening up. Um, for us. And that's not even to take what we could often take for granted, like what's happening in our youth ministry, like what's happening in our young adults, uh, like what's happening in our men's ministry under Monet's leadership and the team that are tight and, and the breakfast that are just growing um, and, and our usual ministries that we'll continue to invest in. Um, I wanted to just highlight perhaps one, one or two things that, that may be not as familiar to you. The other thing I, I think that, um, that, is, that is a kind of just a a small swell that, that is rising has been, uh, and again, I think when you see all that's happening around us, ah, oh, it's like stage four again, ESCOM, and, and, and all that's happening in the presidency and, and, and politics, we feel often so powerless as, as citizens, let alone Christians. But you know what? There's so much we can do. There's so much we can do for the kingdom as an expression of the kingdom. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, Lord if we just open our eyes. And so one of the things we want to look at next year is, is how, we can, how we can be agents, agents of reconciliation, agents of justice and restitution in our own, in our own sphere of influence. We haven't even organized a, a march just in our own area of influence. Be salt and lights. We've had messages about that um, and how we can make a difference, how we can make a difference. And uh, so, so that's a wave that's sort of rising. Here's, here's the summary of it. It means that one of the things I, I feel that we are, we are going to be trusting God for is extending our influence and our reach through serving next year. Just through serving. Getting our hands dirty. Some, some of you will dig deep in your pockets to go on trips to India and Lebanon, maybe another place, I don't know. Um, 
Some of you will, will give further than you've given before. But I think 2023 is shaping up to be a year where we serve our city and beyond with the love of Christ. And in doing so, his kingdom comes. His kingdom comes, and his kingdom is manifest among us. His kingdom is manifest among us. And so I really just want to encourage you to, as, uh, as, you, as, you, as you pray, as, as, you, as you seek the Lord, in January, we'll, we'll pick it up. We've obviously got a whole lot of things that are planned, um, things that will be confirmed in January. Um, we'll revisit this. I'll expand it a little bit more because I know going into the holiday season, we, we kind of forget but, but these are waves that we are, we, are, we are riding. These are waves that we see God moving in us and, and, and through us. There are others. I'm not limiting it to, but for the sake of time, just want to highlight things that you may not be aware of. You may not be aware of what's happening in our children's ministry or uh, through the Immersed Network in our city and, and that kind of thing. And obviously, every, all of our ministries will have plans for 2023. Um, difficult to plan this year because obviously we, um, we didn't know how the pandemic was going to unfold. But now we, we do know that life is pretty much back to normal, and so, and so we can gear up. And one of the ways is to serve our city and beyond with the love of Christ, that his kingdom comes through us. His kingdom comes through us. And you know, when I look across at the potential in this church, the potential to not only serve within our, our four walls, but to go out across our city and beyond, to, uh, to go and make a difference um, for Christ in this world is just staggering. It's just staggering. Every one of us has within us such potential to make a difference for Christ. And so we want to create opportunities uh, for that in the new year, for us just to step into that and to, uh, and to celebrate that. Amen? Amen? Amen. I will elaborate a bit more on, uh, you know, in January, as I said. So we're going, to, we're going to transition now. I'm going to invite you to stand maybe just to stretch your legs, if nothing else. And if you are visiting with us this morning and you would like to slip out, uh, you're more than welcome to do so at this point. Um, after that, I'm going to ask Audrey just to come, our treasurer, who's going to present the budget to us, and, um, and, uh, and then uh, that is kind of like a business thing. So let's stand together. Let's just stand as we just bring this part of the service to a close. And say, Lord Jesus, firstly, we just want to thank you so much for this year. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you, Lord God, for being with us through every moment, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can look back on this year of of some firsts and, and uh, how we've been stretched in, in some ways. And Lord, you've come through us. You've come through for us. And Lord God, we are so grateful. We want to just honor you and thank you this morning. At the same time, Lord God, it gives us faith for the future to believe that the God has been so faithful. The God who has been with us, the God who has been moving among us is the same God who will lead us into the future. God, right now we do pause just to pray for our country. God, to pray for the ANC elective conference, to pray for our presidents and all that is going on in this follow follow report, Lord God. We want to pray your will to be done for this country. Lord God, we we don't know you know how to pray, but we know you. And we know our God. We pray to our God for our land. God, we pray for rain in the area, Lord, just to put out all the fires completely in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Send rain to our dams. God, we lift up our land. With faith, because the God who has been faithful thus far is the God who is faithful into the future. And Lord, we commit our way to you. We commit our way to you for 2023 as a church, stirring our hearts. Thank you for the waves, Lord God, that we are riding. We pray for more, Lord. Lord God, we pray that you would increase our capacity, increase our influence in Jesus' name. And Lord, we come to present a budget before you, Lord God, that we trust in you for, even in these challenging economic times. We trust in you because you are our supplier. And we look to you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.